Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here to start a new campaign in Hearts of Iron 4 using a special mod called Hearts of Iron Ash, Anak Na Babe, in which we're playing as the Storm Children. Um, if you're wondering about this, please go right ahead. Apparently for the sub mod, there is 10 years worth of content. Oh. Oh. This one doesn't even work. Uh, 10 years worth of content um, for this uh, updated, well I guess it technically is a new mod on the workshop, even though I have played the previous version, we played in like Scandinavia and such like that, so, uh, let's see, mod lore, country, region, oh, 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 that's the top one then, ah, the Philippines are a treacherous place, so, yeah, um, I don't exactly understand the full background of everything here, but, uh, I'll talk about because I have those steam paid pulled up on my other screen, but glory to the steam goddess, let's begin with the focus, Valentin de los Santos, she guides us. In this tumultuous times, it's vital to remember that we are fighting for him. As the world beyond lays dying and corrupted, our island stands in unshakable bastion of purity and enlightenment, presided over by our, our goddess. We are more than mere soldiers or resistance fighters. We are her paladins, enlightened in her ways, invigorated by her power. Each man fallen will grant her fury, his spirit, her, uh, joining her as another gust of the great monsoon. Well, behind the mask of Habagat. Strength of a thousand men, invulnerability to man-made weapons, direct audience with the storm goddess herself, these are but a few of the powers granted to Valentin de los Santos by his ethereal mistress. If you be privileged enough to see his powers first hand, describe even greater feats. Tales worthy of folklore or heroes of the old, more yet. The prophets promised each soldier an amulet imbued with a fragment of his own power so that her faith may shield them from attack when this deciding hour comes. And domestication of animals. I oh, guess cap, why not? And we have free military factories, so let's maybe get a oh, gun? Basic spear. Uh, I'm gonna assume maybe that. What are we using here? So we got some spear dudes. They need some body armor, some melee weapons, and then we got Tala division, which needs infantry equipment um, and body armor. So we need some body armor, huh? Leather armor, war raptor, dinosaur equipment, armored elephants, land convoys. Well, I'm assuming we need some horses probably too. Support equipment, probably. Maybe some of this. Um, crossbow sounds like fun. War Raptors sound like fun. Armored Elephants. Yeah, put them on anyways, because you can. Alright then. Also, we're using Play of the Peace Conferences and Station Hunter Tuma, which is pretty normal, but. Um, which one of these is that B word? Ah. So I guess we'll end up going to war with these guys. Alright, well, we'll see. Go and trade anyways. We have 500 monies. Okay. 500 monies. We have a cup of coffee or two. Oh. Pacification of Luzon. If prosperity of the cultures be secured, all regions of Luzon must fall in line. 63% here. An event? The island of Luzon is the last civilized area in the Philippine archipelago, and is added by many different tribes and peoples. At the call of the storm for children to succeed in his mission to cleanse their body, or body, oh, uh, holy land, these people must be converted to the ways of the storm or be obliterated in righteous fury. When a nation in Luzon is conquered by the cold, it may be clicked on in the Luzon map to begin pacification attempts. Political power will be spent in exchange for a medium amount of pacification progress in the province. Pacification levels can also be raised or lowered through focuses, natural spirits, and events. Well, kamikaze season. Um, the disruption of the atmosphere caused by the dark month has resulted in meteorological anomalies across the globe. In the Philippines, this has manifested itself in the form of half annual, half hyper powerful monsoons, known as kamikaze by the local Japanese settlers. Every half year, kamikaze storms rip apart the coast of the archipelago, destroying infrastructure, disrupting supply lines, killing hundreds, no nation of peoples. The exception of those living inland can avoid the uh, storm's thundery watch, to the point where some believe that these inflamed forces of nature could only be the result of, of a will of, from heaven. If, if any nation in the Philippines, whether it be Japanese or Filipino, hopes to unite the region and reform a strong centralized state, they must wage as much war on the storms as they do each other. Uh, be, the, the season will vary in severity each time it arrives, with the potential to cause either minor disruptions or catastrophic damage. Steps may be taken to reduce the impact of the storms and provide relief to impacted areas. However, the kamikaze remain constant, consistent parts of life in the Philippine archipelago. Oh. So what do you have for here? We'll talk about our mission. Untamed at Luzon. Oh, that's not good. <coughs> it's been 11 years since the storm goddess presented herself to Valentine. Before the day in which the truth is of the world and the sky and the sea were revealed to him, he'd been a Christian. This guy was a weak one, a martyr on a cross of wood, slain by mere mortals. But she is strong. She scatters her enemies before her, uh, soothes the winds of the world, and churns the seas in almighty fear that Valentine's former god can never hope to match. However, despite her own power, the storm goddess could not face the evil god alone. He had sent his forces of darkness to the shores of her holy archipelago of the Philippines and bestowed upon them the riches of Tanzanium, a material of heaven forged by the blacksmith god himself. He dubbed, dubbed 
his evil army of the samurai, and charge with him with the destruction of the storm gods of his holy people. This dire threat to her realm was why she came to Valentine and gave him the ma holy mask of Habagat. From behind, she was to amass a holy army like the world has ever seen. This army would raid the holy archipelago of the evil gods and invaders and crush the false Filipino states and deface the altar of her sacred ground. Balongao was to be Valentine's first target, but it would not be his last. She is going she's our guiding wind. Prepare the cleansing. To the last wise a decade and time capsule of the old world, of so called democratic ideals forced upon us by those who seek to tear us down and bring us to our knees. We must stand at the ready as each of the passing day the liberation comes ever closer. Oh, influence. We have embraced the storm. Okay, that's not bad. More entrenchment speed, attacking defensive core territory, degenerates to the south. I suppose this is unity? Yeah. And we have war support but loyalty, really. Uh, average kamikaze season, so that's actually not bad. And my mild grip. What do we have here? Focus on scavenging. Small scale industries. Oh, uh, yeah. Aggressive reconstruction is probably not great. Probably mobilization is where it's at, though. The mask of Hapa got a divine gift from the Storm Goddess herself. Balatine studied it as he clutched it between his fists. He was not one to question the Storm Goddess's will, but sometimes even he wondered if its divine powers, which, which he had described to the thousands of followers. He understood that she worked in mysterious ways, but why had she left it in the rubble of a destroyed house of all places? And why was it only granted to Valentine three years later? Why was she not given to him directly as a sign of her favor? Was it a test of his faith? He could not tell. Valentine gazed upon himself in the mirror. A boom of thunder shook his heart, and as if to demand to put the mask on. Urging him to break the trance, he found himself in. He sighed and slipped the mask strap over his head, letting it down his face. He closed his eyes and waited, but nothing came. The mask was supposed to give him powers, healing abilities, super strength, and vulnerability to weapons, but he didn't feel any different wearing it than he did without it. <clears throat> he thought back to when he first got the mask, and its abilities had been revealed to him. A friend had been asked to stab him, though through the gut to test it, but Valentine refused. Why he refused? Even Valentine himself wasn't quite so sure. Perhaps because at the back of his mind it had a thought, and that, like a parasite, hung onto its every word, and affected every brain so he had. The thought he knew it was ridiculous, even sane even, but he couldn't get rid of it. The thought, I must obey her will. Apparently we get scavenged too. Ever since the dark month, British equipment has been harder and harder. With the death of much of the genius behind the research and a lack of proper infrastructure, many have been forced to revert to the older forms of warfare, but the arms race still continues. The empires have passed even some bands to the present have left abandoned uh, equipment to rot. All forms of equipment are left out there. From now, the guns left some by the aliens. If we're to win, we must get them. It says right now, each expedition costs 250 money. <coughs> melee. Well, we could use melee weapons, right? Melee weapons and infantry weapons and body armor. Let's go with that one. All right. For the cleansing, the southern border. Team in the jungle. The forts of Luzon um, have long been sheltered from us from the invaders. <coughs> The time's come to emerge from its shadows. No longer will we be hounded like animals, rather let us emerge and stand tall, as the placidity of the jungle makes way for fortification of armaments. So apparently for this mod, in the 1880s all over the world alien vaults were found full of technology, but then basically the World War I happened, and then everything kind of exploded. Cool. Um, the goddess has called us on a great crusade. It's never a place to reject her. She is our light and our fury, our guiding wind, and our source of power. She is everything good in this world and outside of it. To disobey her would be to disobey the cosmos themselves. The mission she tasked us with was beginning uh, Balangao, and the false pretenders of this long defunct Filipino state. Bal Balangao will not fold easily, we must prepare. Failure is not an option. Little clique. Heretics of the gates. Pacification level storm child territory. Okay. The gods and her prophet offer glory and salvation, and we will have no love for those who brazenly reject it. Faith bestows on us by colonials have done nothing but divide and cripple. So let's cast off our spiritual and physical shackles. Oh, right. Our flock grows fast enough each day that any sabotage or dissent will be quickly shunned or needed to be snuffed out directly. Yeah, we don't need to see that anymore. But click on this and just nothing happens. Scavenging? Let's see what happens. If we get anything. Find out treasure, treasure trove of melee weapons or scavengers. Uh, return from the scavenger trip and a ready to new mission for the cost of 250 money. Oh, that's not, not bad. At least we got something out of it. I'll follow this line. Look out there, Ophelia. Bouncing gesture out in the courtyard below where rows of new crews were being ceaselessly trained. Last year, those children were being helping their fathers raise crops with bands of steel or hoping the jungle would shield for their families. The prophet did not notice the glint of concern in his daughter's eye. The batches of new soldiers seemed to be getting younger and younger every day. We're teaching them to be strong, stand up, and by our guidance, secure a future for our island, Valentine continued, now noticing one recruit, a boy who older than 16. Breaking into a frenzy, screaming and ferociously slashing at the training dummy with his kirkuri as the others try to drag him off. That is the world I want you to inherit. We're teaching them to kill, Ophelia noted. I understand times are desperate, father, but don't you think that people are getting a little zealous? Valentine sighed, you're right, but that, this is not how I envisioned it would come about either. But you know what the world is like out there, he gestured towards the ocean expanse. The great clouds just barely visible on the horizon. A time will come when we'll have to defend ourselves from it. This is necessary. <clears throat> 
So his father was not yet convinced. Valentine put a hand on her shoulder reassuringly. It was not forever, you know. Look how far we've come already. For the first time in all day, he saw Ophelia look up at him with, his, with, her, with her mother's kind, timid eyes. Everything we do here, we do to give these people a chance at a future. A happy, peaceful future, free from all the war and madness. I hope to live to see you lead us to it. I promise I will, Father. Our Papa. I kind of want artillery, but let's keep the money. We don't make any money, which is really not good. I want money. Holy industry as well, though. Heretics of the gate. Did you launch an attack? A massive attack has been launched by the tribe of and banished from the Philippine wastes. Armed with nothing but spears and clubs, they swarmed across the southern border and caught our garrisons completely unprepared. Our forces were immediately routed, and the tribes who took to looting and raising the province. Oh, crap. This was unexpected and damaging attacks raised demands among our leading figures and our nation to do something about the degenerates for itself. It is the military force of mutual cooperation. Either way, we'll approach this while have its downsides. However, something must be done to secure the holy archipelago for the storm goddess. Action must be taken. Get more unity first, maybe. Get more output. Holy industry. Industrialization may have been a tool of the imperialists, but few can deny the necessity under present circumstances. Most of what are necessary to save out the Japanese cancer, and with their blessing, our city's iron hearts began pumping once more. Our factories are ordained, our construction is consecrated. <clears throat> our labor is a holy ceremony as much as an industrialization campaign. May this toil be a testament to our desire for freedom and offering in veneration or a guide. A betrayal, oh no. <clears throat> By Alejandrino. About to do this one. We'll do holy industry and then we'll do our southern border. A gentle breeze. Worlds collide, gifts for loyalty. Unleash your glory. Wow, 20% more population. Holy crap. Your south lies a complete disaster, a mess of wastelanders. Unlike those who surround us to the north who have been in fairness of ideology and culture at their side, these people are complete bandits, who wish nothing more than to attain as much wealth as possible and to cause as much pain and suffering to us. She will guide us to victory against the barbarians, of course. Uh, reinforce the southern border. What a great rally. You know what? Minus 5% organization for 20% more po people population doesn't sound bad. Offensive in the south. I kind of want to be aggressive. But then again, we don't know how strong they are. Mon.12.t. Ooh. In between. Oh my goodness. Oh, we're losing political power. <clears throat> oh, it's not like we can do anything with it anyway, so. Oh. Oh. We should have gone down that one. In between Kamikaze. Oh, crap. 54 days. Well, crap. <laughs> we can't even build anything here. Oh, goodness gracious. Um. Convoy routes? You're build a bunch of forts because you can. I, I don't know what else to build. Supply hubs? Maybe? <clears throat> um, fortifications along Balagawa? Balangawa? We have stepped out of the jungles and secured a place under the sun. As the diplomacy becomes an ever distant thought, strongholds and traps are being set up along the archipelago. We must take the first steps if we were to brave this looming tide. Um, the little clique. Despite our uncontested rule of the land, our uncertainness of this war has led to internal factions scheming against our rule. Which isn't very good. Well, we're working on forts now. We have three divisions. All we have are maybe working on body armor melee weapons. I'm going to guess. That's all we got. Lightning throwers. I'm going to guess. Well, we'll do whatever we can. <coughs> And a perfidious betrayal, maybe? Well, let's get this one first. Let's see. Uh, uh, one of our finest generals, Alejandro, Al Al Alejandrino, has betrayed us. Reports have said he's fled to Balangua, Balanga. As to why he would do that is beyond us at this time. Balanga has ceased all communication with us. They have forced their hand into the only option we have left now. <coughs> Excuse me for my coughing. Oh, my goodness. What do we have here? Conquest. No. Oh. Mm, that's not bad. Training, administration, and some coffee here. That's, not, that's really good. Influence gain, communism. What are we under? Theocratic Empire. Close to the friends. Alejandro, Jose Alejandrino 
and Antonio Luna were the most fierce generals of Storm Children and Recruita, both having fought side by side in the Filipino War of Independence, and in the forefront of the Storm Child overtaking of southern eastern Luzon. Without the guidance of knack for strategic planning, Valentin's Great Cold would never have swelled his fills on borders, and would flow to the waste of yet another warlord. Above all, however, was the two great generals' de devotion to each other, and the complete lack of devotion to the spiritual cause which was the cornerstone of the Storm Child government. Many in the higher positions of government, especially the prophets, question why two generals who differed so wildly in ideology from Valentine would ever help him and bring the struggling goddess's wrath to the archipelago. <clears throat> Those questions, though not unfounded, had created a rift between the two generals and the rest of the government. It had become a mutual an animosity to so tense that only through Valentine's good graces did Alejandrino and the new remain part of the army. Now, years after the founding of the Storm Child cult, the animosity returns and may need to be resolved before her wrath is brought to the gaze of Balangal. There is one. We're <clears throat> gonna read this one, please go ahead. I, I forget if I read this one or not, so be gentle. I want to go with hard stance, unless your glory. We also not stand the prophet Valentina's long talk, compassion, and solidarity among the common people, and brazen theory to open raids to carry down Luzon's poor with the ultimate betrayal of that cause. Already, uh, armed patrols are being assembled to deal with a banditry of the region's borders, which is with extreme prejudice, welcomed if not outright encouraged against the partisans. Oh, okay. Oh, I just clicked on it. Here's my small mouth. Okay. Oh, it works. Oh, we found your 50. What do we get? Oh, yeah. Okay, 100 money. We'll let's do that first, because we could still use more melee weapons. I really want artillery. <clears throat> so which one is artillery, then? A meeting of the Prophet. Something must be done about these barbarians. They're an existential threat to our mission. Prophet Domagon shouted, slamming his hand on the table. They only stand fire and fury, and we must give it to them. Prophet Bathala shook his head. <clears throat> And how do you think they'll respond if we start burning and looting the villages with even more raids? Not if we obliterate them completely, growled Domagam. He stood from his chair and threw his sword on the table. They have no respect for the storm goddess. She means nothing to them and they laugh at her power. This, he said, pointing to the sword. As all they have respect for, we cannot negotiate with barbarians. Bathala, too, stood from his chair, snatching his sword from the table and pointing it towards Domagam. You are endangering the lives of her people by calling for such rash actions. They are barbarians. To the south may be heathens, but they are still her people, whether you like it or not. Valentine sat in silence at the end of the table, watching the two prophets throw insults at each other. Every meeting of the prophets was like this. Domagon would demand fire and blood in some righteous way, and Bathala would respond with some sort of forceful attempt at curbing his bloodlust. Valentine wondered why he even recruited these troops, or these prophets. They were emotional, too keen on overstepping their bounds. They are meant to be as close as advisors and the spiritual leaders of the people, but they are more often than not that they wasted more hours attacking each other and helping Valentine reach any conclusions. Valentine's thoughts were broken by Dumagon kicking his chair across the room in a fit of rage. Valentine shook his head and stood. The guards posted at the doorway immediately went to attention, and the room fell silent. <clears throat> the two prophets stood at Valentine, waiting for him to say something, but he never did. He just breathed one of the signature heavy sighs, turned around and threw, left through the doorway, leaving his befuddled counselors behind him. Dumagon and Bethal could rage and spit fire at each other all day. Um, uh, and, but at the end of the day, he was a storm goddess's greatest prophet, and his decision, his final decision, the final decision was his alone. Well, um, with that one, then, uh, only understand bloodshed. What to negotiate? Only understand bloodshed. It's your glory. This will not stand. Uh, the prophet Valentine's long taught compassion and solidarity among the common people, and the brazen theory and open raids carried on the Zon's poor were the ultimate betrayal of this cause, or that cause. Already, armed patrols are being assembled to deal with the banditry of the region's borders, which with extreme prejudice, welcomed if not outright, encouraged against parasites. God, I love extreme prejudice. And now we're... Oh, we're getting way more. So what is this? Cat catastrophic kamikaze season, which doesn't look like... Well, I don't know why it helps us out, but okay, yeah. Reinforce the southern border. But peace by fear, the rate of problems being addressed. The farms have found peace in the storm gods that their old government denied them. To limit the threat of attacks once and for all, a set of forts will be erected along the southern border so that any threat can be located and eliminated before it even reaches the shore. So you just find lots of melee weapons. Oh, ready to take the mission for two more money. Yes. Air rifles. Crossbow spears, iron spears. Well, okay. Why not? Oh, 250. Firearms? Oh, we do artillery. Can we actually get artillery? 58% pacified. We're going to keep pacifying the area, no matter what. Mild grip. Get rid of those degenerates. Hurts our organization, but whatever. <clears throat> Training exercise, a whole great rally. Um, we lose some unity. We get more loyalty. Training exercise the jungle wants our shield as in our weapon. What we lack in weaponry, we make up for ourselves in an ambush. Like a fog, we will envelop these bandits and strike. There's no place for criminals in the storm goddess's paradise. The farmer, the peasant, and the laborer alike will be trained to terrorize and retaliate against the former terrorizers. Cool.
Alright, artillery. Um, okay, we got two things of the artillery. So, with only two, we can't add them on, right? Yeah. Just wanted to see what that would be like, maybe. Supply trucks. <clears throat> nice. Hold a great rally. In order to keep us motivated, Valentine's advised us to hold a large rally where we'll hold direct talks with the storm goddess in order to seek the best ways to protect us and advise us during these troubled times as we, we move forward. I right, more money. Melee weapons. Tanzania would be sound like fun. But we want more wait, melee weapons. So with these two groups, these are ten combat with with six soft attack and seven hard attack. These guys are four, four and a half. Um, so individually, infantry gives us one and a half soft attack. <clears throat> these guys actually give us a level less, but more breakthrough. Interesting. Huh. Offensive in the south. The time is now. The troops have mobilized, armed with guns from blessed factories and the desire for revenge. The wife centers of pillage have taken advantage of her kindness for too long. Every green stolen, every household pillage, every animal child snatched away for food or ransom will be paid and tainted blood. Cool. Before we do that, I want to make sure we get more melee weapons first. It looks like we'll do okay. We can just take this guy, this person out first. No forts, no forts. All right. Hey, hey, way more weight melee weapons. Nice. That's good. That's good stuff. 150. We're positive on melee weapons now, which is awesome. Um, we need way more body armor, but you know what? Here, go with that one. And then our board is secured. Uh, the West Center has long been brought to heal. With, while many challenges wait us, the first time the, the, the common man can breathe freely. Gains corn central islands. Uh, the war in Balangawa. Balanga. We march forwards Balanga to liberate the people. No more half measures. I'll get attack bonuses and defense bonuses. Nice. We're started by this one too. Still. Can we go to war now? Southern thrust. Prophet the Magan and Valentine stood before the vast army that had massed before them. These men have been called from across the realm to defend the storm goddess's holy people, and today would be the beginning of a long struggle to bring the southern heathens to heal. Valentine originally planned for her first struggle to be Balanga. Retaking the great city of Manila and destroying the pretenders to the Philippine throne would be a great victory for his royal army, or holy army, and establish the storm children as a powerful force in the archipelago, but Valentine couldn't shake the feeling that his plans had gone off wildly of course, off course already. Were these southern wayseners to be truly be his first targets instead? Why was he willing to willingly luring himself to fight such a barbaric and uncivilized people. Should he not be reaching out to, for loftier goals? <clears throat> Despite his doubts, he believed the force of arms was the best course of action to secure the future of his people. And he had no doubt the storm gust would show her favor to the battle to come. Launch the attack. Oh. Wait, what? Oh. Uh oh. That's not good. Well, that's different. Favor's lost. <clears throat> I don't know we're going to go to a storm children. Wait, what? Oh. It's clear that the great storm goddess has rescinded her favor from our armed forces in that struggle. The barbarians of the south have managed to rider invading troops, obliterating several regiments in the process, and causing mass retreat back in the storm child territory. Our time is limited before the heathens march their own way, uh, armory back across the border. Now their positions are severely weakened. We must be ready for a full scale assault. Um, let me redo that the one. The black ship. Uh, Karnunangan Agbayani had never been one to concern himself with much of the harshness of the world from a young age when his mother died in labor giving birth to his brother. To adolescence when his father taught him the dangers and horrors of the sea to adulthood when the waves had dragged his father far down below. Never had he given much of a thought to the implications of the suffering around him beyond his personal sorrow. So with odd contentment, as people in his village would whisper, much the same as his ancestors a dozen generations before, would now rob, uh, row out his boat at the break of dawn and drag whatever fish he could from the deep. So the decades since his parents' passing had found, passed peacefully, he all alone on the boat, the endless abyss around, all others grieved over the destruction of the dark month and the invaders from the foreign shores taking over, he rode just the same. Even as the fish he would catch took on an odd and twisted shape, some of the cursed stones from the heavens, this elders of his village said he fished and just caught the same. That was until one morning with the sun barely crawling out of the water. A ship appeared before him. One both real and unreal, a ship from a ship but its form unlike any he had ever seen. Markings with a twisted tongue, ear, colors eerily familiar yet and symbols he'd never seen anything bear. In a flash of foolish curiosity, he tried to row it towards it. Yet as he turned around after a couple of knots, he was blinded by the now ascendant sun. When he finally could make something out once more, the ship had vanished. Yet he waited and waited until the sun was at his peak and he had unbearable. As he turned to row back to shore, he saw it yet again. A flee fleeting black spot many knots south. Scuttling before the shore, turning back, relocating, scouting. A new type of sweat ran down Karnunanangan's neck. Not the hot one on the heat, but the cold primary sphere. 
Primal fear. Frantically rode back to the ship's location and forgot them. The only thing on his mind was to get out the word out to someone, anyone, even if they ridiculed him. For the first time in his life, he felt the harshness of the world place. It's definitely cold claws around the neck of everything he held dear. The smell of blood is in the rolling wind. Also, um, as we've been doing this for longer now, I've gotten up to 16 combo with, and we're probably still going to lose, I'll be honest, in the end. Um, we're doing okay, though. I feel like we're still going to lose, but we never know. Catastrophic kamikaze season. Um, we have no idea, so... Yeah, maybe we still win. We're now at 78% pass pacified. Uh, we don't have enough money. Yeah, I don't know if we're actually going to win here. I've been trying to bump up how strong these guys have been, but, you know, we run out of melee weapons, so. That is what it is. But I don't like any more manpower, though. It's quite nice. Hey! 50 more? That's not much. But we'll take it. We need some body armor. Tanzanium? Uh, let's see what Tanzanium's like. And of course, we're using Jose Alejandrino, who's going to betray us eventually, which does suck, but whatever. Can we just like lose and just go to war at this point? I'm ready to go to war, man. I'm ready to go to war. Well, 83% specify is not bad. If it's just 3v1, I mean, we could win, probably. But at the same time, eh, it's taking forever. It's taking forever, man. <clears throat> we're working on the body armor. Obviously, we don't have enough. Let's go to 3 there. I'll keep it down to 1-ish. We did get the Iron Spear, which is better than what we had earlier, so... Um, yeah, we're probably going to lose this in the end. We got way more army XP, though. Steel Spear. Poison Spear. Daily Balance, more Breakthrough, Soft Attack, Hard Attack, Piercing. Yeah, we're probably going to lose this battle. So, I tried, but, you know, whatever, it's fine. Oh, oh crap. Well, that's not good. In the meantime, while we'll collecting a lot of political power, what else can we do? Here, uh, division training. Honestly, there's really not much we can do here. Might as well just keep the influence. Dude, you're not allowed to give up. <clears throat> Get back in there. Gotta hate these border wars sometimes, man. Oh, we can, oh, we can do something here. Okay. Concerns. Uh, motorization. Force conscription. Mass armies. I can wait. We don't have anyone here either. <clears throat> uh, more unity, less recruitable population. Well, that wouldn't be very good. Well, let's get some good stuff. Theocratic Empire. Ultra nationalism. Oh, militaristic empire. Communism. Conquest, more loyalty. This is all right. Um, honestly, influence gain. As much as I love getting more political power, and I'm not sure if we're really supposed to like switch out of this stuff, I want training. Because that'll give us way, way, way more XP. And get more land auction done and stuff like that, so... Hopefully, at least. Yeah, that's gonna take forever. Holy crap. Um, let's keep pacifying the area, I guess. Um, after that, close economy... How, how's resources? Oh. We're, we're doing okay on resources. Well, ish. Focus on scavenging. I think it's some next nice small scale industrial work stuff. I mean, it's not like we can build anything here. We've we built a fort. That's it. Um, where are we at? 156 is not bad. We're doing a lot better in body armor, too, which is good, very good to see, too. Maybe we'll win in the end of the Clash of Kalevala. You remember that? Plus, we're that's the other nation that we can play as, so. Before we lose. At this point, I don't really care if we win or lose. Here's a world. Oh, free territory. Is this under Machno? It is under Machno. Oh. Poland. Königsberg. Well, the Pol Polish are alive for now. Uh, I have played as this group. The council of scribes. You look familiar. Kavala. So I have played as this group before. I might play as them again to see if they're anything different, maybe. Locker's Legacy. The Clique. So, we'll see. Good God. We're back up to the 60s. <clears throat> Oh, it's 93% pacified? Yeah, it's green. Well, we got more money now. We more melee weapons. Seems like we could always use... No, we have enough melee weapons. If that's the case, if you guys ever take a break, make them thicker. We like them thick. Just need more body armor. <coughs> yeah, infantry equipment. We don't have any of that. Infantry equipment to crossbows. Let's start making some of that stuff, too, if we can. Well, you know... 
If this continues, we might actually win. <coughs> or maybe we won't. Oh my god, is it taking forever? Well, let's see if we get any more equipment. And maybe we'll get some firearms next, too. To find some blood instruments. Okay, 30. It's not great, but you know what? I'll take it. 18 combat is not bad. We have no support equipment either, so. Body armor is looking better. It's looking definitely better. And that should be good. Oh. What do we have here? Docile season? Okay, that's not bad. Strong grip. Ooh. That's actually very good. Yeah, look at that. Required garrisons goes way down. Degenerates to the south we're trying to get rid of. It seems like this is just going to take forever, though. There we go, everyone. Barbarians brought to heal. After a long, bloody struggle, the barbarians of the south, uh, of the southern wastes, have finally been brought to heal. The last of their forces along the border have been completely annihilated, and the meager little town has been burned. The town's come for the storm children to take more direct control. The storm god smiles on us. It's unfortunate that this guy... Well, these guys are veterans. Uh, we can't use him. I'm not going to use him. Hey, this guy's actually better. Valentine, yes. Oh, it's offensive. Yes, very good. Very good. Um, what are we going to do next? Our board is geared. West Center's been brought to heal while we may have more challenges to await us. The first time the common man can breathe freely. Good. Get out of our territory, you piece of garbage. Mm, view territories. So, in oversight's fine. Um, honestly, yeah, you might as well do kamikazes. Frozen spears, nice. Very good. Engineering, research speed, sure. Why not? Development stage, uh, plane. Oh, that's kind of cool. Get some planes. Bas ballistas. Cavalry. Recon stuff. Engineers, maybe? Give you bonuses to that stuff, so maybe. Poison spears, nice. It's a defection. Uh, General Jose Alejandrino had never been intended to be part of something so big. He joined Valentin's cult into the tail end of the dark month as a means of securing his own safety. His friend, Antonio Luna, had convinced him that the mad cult leader may be controlled, and that his charisma could be used to secure a safe haven for the Filipino population. Foolishly, Jose had been accepted. Or had accepted. As the cult crew, so too did the horrors. The recruitment of those darn prophets, Dumagan. Dumangan and Bathala, always whispered in Valentin's ear, had been the beginning. Jose and Antonia had expected to be the chief puppet masters, but those prophets had robbed them of the positions. Now, the cult was out of control. Dissidents were being forced, forcedly assimilated. Blood sacrifices were being made, and neighbors were being attacked, and now the meager waste centers south of the border were being stomped under the jackboot, had forced the near to the storm children's ever-growing empire. Jose Alejandrino had fought the Philippine Revolution against the Peerless, and now he saw a new Imperialist arising in the archipelago from within. One drenched in blood and shouting praises to the sky. He couldn't stand for this any longer. It would not be a puppet of the puppet. <clears throat> His involvement ended for now, tonight, on this western border. He was about to flee to Balanga, the last safe haven of san sanity in this cursed archipelago, and he planned to never look back. But this treason won't go unpunished. How dare you. How dare you. Go to melee weapons, though. Porter secured. Sacrifices. Well, a perfidious betrayal. <coughs> Excuse me, I apologize. Man, my boy, I need to get my throat checked out or something. The Righteous Retaliation. For Balangal's refusal to negotiate for the return of Alejandrino, we must prepare for our retaliation and our right to war. Men will be trained, arms shall be born, they shall feel a wrath, if only they had listened to us. <coughs> Let's see what uh, melee weapons... Firearms, yeah. We still have infantry here, so... That's not looking bad at all. I may make you guys like 26 combo with. I don't know. I like them thick. If they're not thick, we don't want them. That's how I, that's how I live my life. If they're not thick, we don't want them. That goes for pretty much anything. Right, Antonio Luna? We have been betrayed. 100% pacified. Are you going higher? No, okay. Yeah, I like this idea. The pacification idea, I think, is very good. I like, I enjoy it quite a bit. The traitor is Alejandrino. That heretic dude. Alejandrino can't get away with this. Dumangan shot is spitting, uh, spittle flying from the holes in his mask. A storm gust dictator invasion of Balangan first. Yes, this is a sign. We must launch an attack now. Bathalo made an exasperated sigh, an attack is unwise. Balanga is heavily fortified, and we are far from ready for a full-scale war. A small, small search party will be the best course of action. I'll draw, it'll draw less attention from the Balanga government. And if the search party is discovered, and a little diplomatic conflict escalates into war, what happens then? asked Valentine. Then we go to Dimagan's way, but does, it, does, it does help us to attack our enemy so early. We must try to be subtle, at least. Valentine nodded and stood from his chair, the traditional sign of the meeting of the prophets having been concluded. I will not send thousands of wars in the towns of Balanga to die, far from the storm goddess of sight, for one traitor. I have made my decision. So in the search party, party after Alandrino. <clears throat> I'm probably going to invent by that too. Oh, we have five factors. Nice. Oh, go back up. Yeah, I like this a lot. Docile is not bad. Strong grip. I love having a strong grip. Um, 
Ah, the letter. Valentin couldn't believe it. Uh, the storm gods truly did work in mysterious ways, but he had un underestimated the extent of her power. Had he missed some sign, some revelation, some dream? Why did she allow this to ever happen? Was she so eager to see the invasion of Balangal come earlier, had her favor been rescinded? The letter Valentin held in his hands was no answer, but what it did tell him was more straightforward. A hard pill to swallow, of course. Um, the part search party sent into Balangal territory had been ambushed almost immediately on Alan arrival. Alejandrino had been leading the attackers, and there was few survivors. Alan, uh, not only Alan. Alejandrino fled to Balanga, but he also killed allied with them and led them into the slaughter of his former countrymen. The traitor's general is no longer just a runaway, but an aggressive enemy. Valentin raised his eyes to meet Domagans. No words were spoken between them, but a message was exchanged. Domagans turned and left the room, Bathala trailing sorrowfully behind. Valentin didn't bother to stand this time. He and the storm guards had reconciliation to do. Right retaliation. Yeah. And finally, they listened to us. Mark of Manpower, which we don't actually need at all, but the funeral of the Fallen. What better way to drum up support for the war than to pray for a Fallen? Everyone loves a good martyr, and this is a perfect time for this to occur. What we'll a mass funeral of all who have fallen in order to keep the people united. Nice. Can I promote anybody yet? Here, you can be promoted for now. I've got nothing else to do with your thing. Sure, why not? I'll promote everybody. Screw it. Why not? 1.6 every day, get a lot from loyalty, the righteous retaliation, the funeral of the fallen. Might as well. Ma matching Balaga. The reality is that Balaga is a large economic military powerhouse and we are. We need to conscript men in the hundreds, if not thousands, if we wish to match our strength and win decisively. More factories, soldiers, and training camps. That's the only way we can succeed against a decadent republic. Get some crossbows, get some of that, get some of that too, which would be great, 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 great. And this is a core now, right? Oh, that's so good. We do that instead. It's gonna take a long time, actually. <clears throat> okay, so uh, oh, oh, I get some of that, but which we don't really need. So we can't uh, pass by this area, which is fine. We can uh, pass by this territory, okay. And we could use more money, you know, for the fallen, matching Balaga. All right, 150. Do we, because we took some more territory, do we get any more money? Oh, oh maybe, yeah. And sacrifice, but let's see, melee weapons. Melee weapons are fine-ish. Infantry equipment would be needed. Firearms. Sacrifice. In order to secure a victory against Balanga, we'll have sacrifice captured Balanga soldiers as a blood sacrifice to the Storm Goddess. She'll be pleased by our conquest, our right, rightful liberation. She must, must, must. Poison spears, huh? Well, we'll see. We only get... Oh, we lose stuff every day. Well, crap. <clears throat> We only have three divisions, which is not good. Um, let's just poop you up for now. Help oh, guard our border. And you have what here? All stats can be offensive and get more attack. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Alright, sacrifices. It's time. This clock, clock, strike, clock strikes 12. All crap. No time left. We act now. Yeah, get more money. 100% pacified. Love it. We don't really need to see that. I mean, that's fine to have it open, but we don't really need to have that open. Um, yeah. We could definitely use way more body armor, though. Holy crap. We'll be in deficit for years to come. And melee weapons aren't very good either now. Hey, but we're doing really well infantry equipment, though. Three a day. About roughly three and a half a day for both of these, which is not bad. We need more leather armor first. Losing political power, it's fine. A sacrificial ceremony we'll read about next. Overall, not bad. <clears throat> Overall, not too shabby. <coughs> of course, once we get there, we'll improve the infantry, uh, the actual infantry divisions as well. Maybe we'll get some war elef elephants. We'll see. Maybe a sacrificial ceremony. Then a cracked overhead, muffling the beating of the drums and shouting of the crowd. Periodically, the sky lit up with the lightning, reflecting light off the pouring rain and illuminating the entire stadium. The greatest storm of the season was upon the Philippines, and a great ceremony was being held. Oh, look at this! From back of the stadium, two guards emerged, dragging behind him a man, badly beaten and bloody. The patch in his uniform revealed him to be a Balangawi, a prisoner of war. He and his captor approached the great stage in the center of the stadium, and the drums began to beat louder and louder, keeping in time with the soldiers' footsteps and the crowd's uproar grew. Finally, the captured soldier was dragged to the foot of the stage and hoisted up, up onto it by two more guards standing above. As the man rose from his knees, guards on either side of him, he had met eyes with a face, a hate face, hidden behind a mask. The eyes were jarred, hard and jaded. As firm as stone, but there was a wildness in them. An unsettled relentless protruded from him behind the pupils, breaking the tough outer veil and revealed something deeper. The soldier could see the eyes were that of a killer, but also that of a man on the brink. This man, he thought, did not want to do what he was about to do, but the restlessness inside had all but absorbed the jagged exterior. The eyes darted back and forth, scanning the Balangawi soldier, and for a second he wondered if those eyes were too reading him, the same way he'd read them. He did not know. 
Valentine unsheathed his dagger and pressed into the soldier's throat. A crack of thunder followed, then a flash of lightning, and then finally a single swift motion of Valentine's arm brought a torrent of blood cascading across the stage. The crowd cheered, the drums beat, and the sounds of Valentine grew ever louder. A sacrifice, a blood sacrifice for the storm goddess. <clears throat> my apologies for my throat. Oh, what do we have here? <coughs> strong grip, well, I love a strong grip. Song from Beyond the Mist. In the heart of the Filipino jungle stood a lone radio station, a small shack with ancient foundations of stone fusing with new drab planks nailed onto one another. A simplicity, but lied its significance, however, for it was here that the nerves of much of the Philippine archipelago converged, a spider in a web of information were lying, were laying, listening, reporting. With a dark month, the American backed government had collapsed, and the last American troops had departed long before the settlers from Japan arrived, yet the American legacy still lived on, be it culture, ideas, guns, or tech. The latter technology soon became the nucleus of a hidden empire of invisible waves, allowing Filipino towns and villages to converse beneath the notice of the Japanese invaders. And they all converged here. A shack in the jungle, the bare-bones crew of men supplied with the surrounding villages, listening and reporting, filtering the important from the unimportant. And the unimportant in the reports these tr days truly were, and the greatest of heat of the summer, the coast were arrived with the rumors. Fishers and waterway merchants reporting movements far from land, black ships with strange markings scuttling far from the shore doing nothing. Truly unremarkable. Filtered out, no word reached the surrounding lands. However, much more dire news far in the south emerged on the island of Minandao. Minadanao. Heavy fighting between Filipino settlers and yet unidentified attackers. One, once the word out, out the word went. The Filipino people, people knew. Uh, Filipino people, people knew. The weeks dragged on. The fighting in the south end died down. Reports only became more sporadic. Weeks became months. Contact in the south was lost. A week later, the reports of the black ships nearly doubled. The reports indicated dents and bruises in their hulls. Through the invisible waves, the people knew it is time, and she will speak. <clears throat> It's here, the moment you've been waiting for. Why are you nervous? Why do you not trust her? Trust her, trust her. You cannot afford to doubt her now. She is leading us to destruction. Let Alejandrino go, let the mask go, let her go. No, she's our guiding wind and the thundering force. She's not led us astray. Don't trust her, Valentine. Do they attack us now? Okay. Well, let's go in here first. Oh, there's. Oh, they do have three divisions, huh? Oh, it's the Alejandrino. And then shatter the structure. They'll cast upon a young tactician, a man who's pledged him and his friends to help us with the construction of a catapult in order to strike down the Balangala structures. That's cool. Um, can you guys see that? They are dug in, but as long as they don't try to attack us, it's okay. Of course, we have no manpower. Infantry equipment is actually positive. Look at that. Oh. Scans for firearms. Sure. Why not? Because we can. Because we're worth it. Alejandro Hino. Alejandro Gino. Beautiful. Um, two divisions. Supplies arrived. The vast stream is over. So supplies arrived from infantry. Um, carried on combo sent from the nation of Pelag and An Anitu warrior tribe further north. These nations see wish to see Balangal fall as much as we do, and are clearly hoping to slip into our good graces after the last Balangawi resistance crumbles. We we'll obviously accept their tribute, but we don't intend to return the favor. Don't look a go gift horse in the mouth. Not bad. If they don't have any organization, they can't do anything about it, right? You gotta keep up the attacks. You have to. Their turn empty Are you kidding me, bro? Come on, man. Air rifles, metal armor? Sure, why not? How are we losing on attack? The most important thing is to lower their organization to nothing. Literally nothing. There you go. Now you can hold. Organization so I want us to recover first. Uh, there you go. Now, hold out. And we'll attack all at the same time. Melee weapons, firearms. We need more melee weapons, though. We, uh, we got enough firearms for now. <clears throat> we can really use more body armor, though. Should out of the structure. 
and thrive in the storm. Despite her hardships, we shall succeed. She wills it. The sun sets. Sporadic fighting continues on the outskirts of Bangalore territory. However, most of the defending troops have completely dissolved before it might. The great city of Manila, the once the seat of the Filipino government, and the most egregious example of imperial suppression of the common man, have been firmly placed in her hands. This symbolic victory slammed the last nail in the coffin for the now extinct Filipino government. And so she must be made on what exactly to do with the city. It should be the new seat of power, or the new seat of the storm goddess. Very cool. Ah, uh, storm children. That's not core, but new focus. Shall we? We shall. Follow the Manila clique. Necessary uniformity. Ooh, we get more... Whoa. Plus 10% weekly unity gain. And the loyalty gain. We need more garrisons. It is most important that we promote and enforce the covenants and commands of the goddess. We cannot allow distance and false teachings to take hold in our nation. We must be of uh, one mind, saving the doctrine and rhetoric. If divisions are allowed to sprout up among our people, government will never be letting glory to the name of our goddess. It will not be trampled on by the nations of this world if we are to purify and rebuild this world in her name, and it's our main prerogative to ensure this unity of our organization. Cool. Follow the Manila clique. Uh, the war was a burning inferno of death and destruction, but the grand old city of Manila now rests in the embrace of the storm goddess, and the towers of old have been beaten to the sea. The bodies broken and shattered, but resistance from the degenerates is still prevailing in the city. Many of the false idols of the regime still remain prevalent in the hearts and minds of the people, but with their blessings we shall show the people her truth. That's very strong. Weekly loyalty gain? Holy crap. <clears throat> That's awesome. The heretics question. The question heretics. Just like an infectious boil, these godless creatures will be the be cured or exterminated. The only way to argue with the heretics is by removing the tongue that they use to utter and spread such blasphemous lies. They either submit or recast on the waves of the ocean if they would not let themselves be taken by our gods in this life, then our corpse will be consumed by our storms and death. Running down Aguino. Aguinaldo. The tower of the ways of the old that failed the world will be cut off from the strands of hair from our goddess, for that is what gives every child, man, and woman, and animal their sac sacred essence of existence. This vile reprobate that killed many faithful brothers and sisters and even his own subjects and minions were not spared uh, from the cold heart of the fool in the purple garments. The ashes of the old world are the contents of the heads of anyone who follows the despots of the past. The way forward is not into the graves of our ancestors. It is the light of the sun that must march forward. It must find the shovel of a man and strike off his name from the book of life. A notable POW. Dumagon gripped the prisoner's hair and clenched fist and raised his head to make his eyes visible. Alejandrino, the prophet, snarled. He wiped off some blood of the general's face and flicked it off his hand to the feet of the chair. You've caused great embarrassment to our leader, but more importantly, you've embarrassed her. How could you turn your back on the countrymen? Those who took you in during the collapse, did you have no loyalty, no ideals, no character? Alejandrino stiffened in his chair as if to say something, but all that escaped his mouth was an exasperated sigh. And he slouched back down. Dumagon squatted in front of his captive, coming eye to eye with the general and removing his mouth, lying on the floor next to him. Valentine will kill you for what you've done. Dumagan will do worse, but I still believe she desires mercy in all things we do. So I will spare you from your fate in one condition. I'll tell Valentine that you died in Manila, but you must agree to command a great force under my control when I call upon you. Until I require your services, you will live in a cell, acting as my silent dagger in the night, waiting to be drawn. Alejandrino raised his eyes again, this time making direct contact, eye contact, with Bathala. The blood filling his mouth assorted his words, and the prophet can make out a single word, Luna. Dumagan nodded, realizing a quiet understanding that had formed between the two men. He rose to his feet and motioned the two guards by the door to lead Alejandrino to his cell. Dumagan. Dumangan had much work to do. Luna. Heretics. Balagan has fallen, but so many remain. Valentine, heretics, non-believers, those who reject her. They are a threat to you, they are a threat to the family. That's what they are. What we are, aren't we? A family. She is in our mother, she is our mother, and we are her children. Why would you let them threaten your family? Do away with them. Teach them of her ways. Show them her power. Your victory has already been secured, Valentine. Why must you go further? Enough blood has been drenched in grass. Now you wish to flood the countryside? Rest in your, your victory. Move the Balangawis into their own communities. Show them mercy. Be better than they would be that be better than they would be. She is a furious storm, and upon her wind comes the vengeance of thousands. Communal segregation. Ooh, segregation. Occupation cost goes down. I tried that one. Well, you will take mercy on the on heretics. We should segregate them from us in small towns that would accompany, accommodate their needs. It's out of pity that we take this action. Out of the out of some might have a change of heart and mind to favor the truth of our goddess. The rest will have under the watchful eye and protection of our patrols and security. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's very good. Uh, this will ensure that we don't have to create mounts of bodies to get rid of, of undesirables. They can live out their lives and we'll be able to convert the majority of them after some time has passed. Tanzania? Sure, why not? Get 200 every month, so might as well, right? Might as well. As of now, we're losing some political power every day, but whatever. Strong grip still. In between the seasons. Proselytizing of the storm. Holy crap. That is strong. A chicken plucked. Emilio Agua... Aguinaldo has been fleeting for days through the battered rain and blinding lightning, trying to find any salvation he could from the armies at his back. When the storm child or troops entered Manila, he had fled to the countryside, hoping to maintain a romp of Balangawi state on the outskirts of the territory, but his countrymen proved to be more cowardly than he, and the fall of Manila brought with it swift destruction of the government soon after. Lost and dejected, Aguinaldo next led to Anitu warrior border, but he had been run back into Balagan, 
Balangal, by Anutu gangs wielding spears and clubs. His last hope was to head south in the territory of the Wastelanders. They were a rabid race of people, but any pain they could inflict upon him would be nothing compared to what the Storm Children would do. What Aguinaldo did not know that he would never have a chance to breach in the Wasteland. Storm Child soldiers had been talking, tailing him for days. Toying with him as a lion does with its prey, but now they were bored, and his obliviousness of the situation was ended with a crack of gunfire. A bullet ripped through his leg, and he fell hard against the ground. Laughs erupted behind him as he began to crawl across the ground, grasping his wound in a vain attempt to stop the gushing blood. They hit an artery. The two soldiers meandered up next to him, watching him claw at the dirt, panicked and breathless. Another crack of gunfire, this time the bullet embedded himself in the back. Aguinaldo screamed and began to throw blood upon the grass. A soldier's laughing grew louder, and another bullet, this time in his arm, sent more blood cascading across the field. Images began to flash between Aguinaldo's eyes as Chardon and Kawit. His time in college, about as the Filipino Revolution in the Dark Month, and flight from Bataan in the wake of the invading Pugali, Pulagi regiments. Aguinaldo ceased his squirming and laid his face flat against the ground. His past realized had not been a happy one. He had been soaked in as much blood and pain as he was now, lying there in the sealed as a precipice of his death. He felt a sharp pain in his side, a knife this time rather than a bullet, but he still lay motionless, thinking of his life. What had this all been for? Why had he and so many others fought to escape the black dark month? Why did humanity not just escape, accept his fate as he was about to go? A final gunshot ended his thoughts. It wasn't as fun when he stopped squirming. A divinely sanctioned purge. Life without death is meaningless, and an occasion to call for rivers of blood to ensure the survival of you, your people, your nation, and your goddess. This is not an exception to the law of life. Threats up to her divine glory will not be taken with a whip or a tear. They will be struck with the force of a thousand moons, monsoons, crushed with the weight of a hundred mountains, and set ablaze with the heat of the sun itself. Anyone who dares reject her word will be thrown into the storms of her anger and be thrown and tossed about until she sees fit to let them pass into death. The villages of sympathizers to these heretics will be burned in the pits of ash and cinder. We must not let a single threat to her blinding glory escape righteous punishment. Congre congregation. Admittedly, nobody in the congregation had ever actually seen the prophet walk on water or brush off bullets or do anything of the things he claimed his faith let him do, but none of the parishioners could refute his statements either, and that was good enough for them. Faith, brothers and sisters, Valentine continued to blaze with a magnetic passion. Faith alone has the power to move mountains apart, to sink cities into the ground, and let mere men defeat giants. May faith in her proud history. Faith in her community, he raised his arms to the old church's ceiling. Faith in her. What about faith in Christ, Father? A lone female voice cut through the entrance sounds of the building. I remember when you used to preach that. All lies in the church turned to the soul of apostate, Valentine's own daughter, insolent child. Prophet Dumongan, please. Valentine gestured for his guards to sit. She has the right to ask. It is true that I was a Christian most of my life, quite a devout one at that. He spoke more to a crowd than Ophelia. Like yours, my belief in what the Spaniards called God was so much shadow when the dark month came. Valentine's last statement sent a much intended rumble throughout the crowd. I ask then, Heavenly Father, why are you letting your own devout followers suffer like this? Why does their sky bleed, our livelihood lay destroyed, our government sit replaced by the roving gangs of rapists and thieves? Why are we the ones paying the price of the colonialist war? I am yet to meet a priest with a coherent answer. The Europeans' God cared for us as much as the Europeans themselves, where Christ sat silent. She responded, it was only with her guidance that we came together to build up our defenses. What more proof do we need of her power than anything else around us? Valentine lead on his pedestal. I've gone through a crisis of faith, yes, we all have, but I know, as all of you do, that in these dark times, ours is the only faith worth having. Praise her. Sanctioned stuff. Cool. Guys are still building up some civvies. Uh, we need more body armor. That's pretty much it. We need a lot of body armor, actually. But yeah, getting more daily armor XP is very good. Very good. Get to 500, which is pretty normal. Still mobilizing more, though. Yeah, getting rid of this empire thing. Might be worth doing. Loyalty unities, we don't need that at this point anymore. Um, municipal congregation, devalue, sanction, purge, preaching the unclean homes, uh, top of the false gods. The scoffers and ridiculers of our gods must be stamped out on the ground. The Catholics forbid and persecute our faith and killer messengers or offer them diplomatic relations. The righteous day of our Balthala has begun. The bones will be grounded in dust. Their eyes soon shut, their minds wiped clean of their childish objections to the everlasting glory. We'll take up the sword of, the, that are, of our ancestors that they slaughtered to build the mockery of a country upon, and we'll exterminate them from the side of our mother in the storm. Luna's confrontation. Where's Alejandrino? Valentino was baffled. Where's Alejandrino? Surely General Luna must be joking. I'll repeat myself. Where is Alejandrino? Valentino drew back. He's dead. Dad in the Battle of Manila. Bethala reported it himself. Luna stood up from his seat. Why are you lying to me? Alejandrino wasn't even at the Battle of Manila, and if he was, we never found his body. He's still alive. Are you looking for him? Do you have any eye? Valentine cut him off. I don't like your tone, General. Balathala reported that Alejandrino, Alejandrino is dead. So he's dead. Are you questioning the words of one of the Storm Prophets? Luna shook his head and sighed. I'm not questioning them, Great One, but I do wonder how Bathala came to this information if my own troops didn't. But you are right. Bathala is a noble and generous prophet. I must be mistaken. I apologize. Luna turned and left the room, muttering under his breath. Valentine sat in his chair and fiddled with the amulet. How did Bathala get this information? Surely he wasn't in the battle. He's not a military commander either. Had he heard it in hearsay? He wouldn't lie, would he? No, Bathala wouldn't lie. And demonstrate military might. A storm of gore first, though. But Thal couldn't believe what he was seeing. Bodies strewn across the countryside, almost more abundant than the blades of grass. The blood dripped from the branches of trees and bubbled up in the soils. The air was filled with walls, gun whales, gunshots, and gas. They looked like Christian heck. The storm child's soldiers moved across the bodies of 
field of bodies. Plunging bayonets into those unlucky enough to still be moving, off in the distance, a child screamed for her mother, and the gunshots followed soon after. Directly ahead, man rose to his feet, a farmer looked to be, and raised a knife in the defiance. A torrent of bullets swiftly brought him back down to the ground. Houses burned alongside the left of the side of the field, throwing smoke and ash in the sky, looked like to Bethala like another dark month. These bodies had been villagers. Storm child soldiers coming in the night, and as the townspeople fled the city where they were slaughtered in this field that Bethala now found himself standing in, up to the ankles in pools of blood. He removed his mask, and the smell of iron and flesh assaulted his nostrils. He closed his eyes, his nose, and vomited. Only the evil god could have done this, but Valentina had been ordered to commit a slaughter like this across the whole Balangawi territory. She had personally told him to do so. Why had she commanded such carnage? Bethala could have known. Another gunshot. The people of Balangawi must have full display of a capability to both defend ourselves and go on the offensive. We'll parade our men throughout the entirety of the region. We all will be astonished and awestruck by our military prowess. We will wave our banners on high with pride and put faith in her goddess, and we will march and stand so that we might be counted among those who she has anointed with the reins of the living waters of the faith. Glory awaits. 50% pacify is very good. We got 250 money. Uh, let's go with artillery. Right now, artillery wise, we have nothing. Crap. Windbreakers. Even the mightiest gales can be tempered by strong resistance. That's what's happening all across Balangawi territory. Reports of slaughter at the hands of storm child regiments have set off a massive uprising against the local populations. Already, several convoys and troop transports have been ambushed by these guerrilla fighters. Little Manila is firmly under the storm of child control. The countryside is quickly slipping out of her hands, and chaos threatens to spill over the traditional storm child territory. They must be firmly dealt with. A oh, weekly union goes down. Well, that sucks. The pyre. <laughs> the burning piles in the center of the village lit up the, the dark sky with a burning uh, glow, glowing fury. All around the flames stood a crowd of villagers, watching in silence with some tears rolling down their, rolling down their cheeks. Others started a stony eyed into the burnal as it was hoped to find some salvation within. A few more of the villagers sc shuffled about, forward, carrying with them crosses, rosaries, bibles, and other small trinkets of worship. They stopped over with a fire and figured their possessions. The guard screamed at them to hurry up, and in a swift, tearful motion, they threw the items into the flames. The summer atmosphere was broken by the shouts of a man from somewhere in the crowd. All eyes turned towards the commotion as man in tattered priest attires was thrown into the center of the gathering, his face almost co coming into contact with the burning pyre. <clears throat> Two soldiers rushed out of the crowd behind him and raised him to his feet. A knife was plunged into his side by a third, and the priest was heaving in the flames. With one quick motion, he was gone, but the screams continued for another thirty seconds. The smell of burning flesh filled the nostrils of the spectators. Some vomited, and yet, after the screaming had stopped, another group stepped forward and sacrificed their items. The burnings continued throughout the night, and the next, and the next. Anyone who refused to sacrifice their belongings was cast in the flames as well. The faith of villagers, the only thing left they had, they had left out of the dark month, began to fade. <clears throat> God had abandoned them, and all that was left was her. A cleansing flame. <coughs> uh, preaching the unclean. Oh, God. We've taken mercy upon them, and now we must align them to the teachings of our most gracious goddess. We'll still introduce the faith into the communities we've organized for them. Her blessings will trickle down upon them like a light sunshine. Her rays of truth will shine brightly into their hearts. And we'll walk them every step of the way in their loving embrace, being reborn and forgiven of their transgressions. Some say that not uh, not one of these heretics can be saved, but we, but many of us were heretics before divine revelation to us. Revelation. We're required to provide the riches of our knowledge to them. We will glorify her name around the earth. Arms, convoy, attacked. <clears throat> Since the start of the Balangawi uprising, attacks on the convoys have become commonplace. However, few have been nearly devastating as the most recent, launching the outskirts of the core of child storm territory. A large supply of guns has been seized, and the fighting spilled in the neighboring villages, causing widespread destruction of infrastructure. If attacks like this persist, vital shipments to occupying soldiers in the aerial and core military units across the rest of the country will be severely hampered and kibbutz at the mercy of our enemies. So not going and damaged or unavenged. <coughs> Union loyalty doesn't really matter to us too much. Militaristic Empire is not bad, though. Consumer goods is not bad either. And we lose influence game, but I don't want to lose any population. We don't need any loyalty unity because we're going to get more anyway, so. I'm going to Militaristic Empire. <coughs> Weekly. Oh, actually, we're losing stuff right now. Oh, crap. A pitiful warning. Apparently, reports have reached the Pulau government over a righteous extermination of the heretical beliefs in Pal Balanga. Eulogio Rodriguez, being an extremely devout Christian leader, sent messages warning our cult against further oppression of the Christian beliefs. It's hardly a serious threat. Who could take it seriously? Buffoons. <clears throat> Propaganda against insurrectionists. We wish to declare to the people the wicked actions and subversive nature of the heretics. They will know of this endless skies above uh, the, declare the glory of a goddess if it doesn't have value to them. Nothing of our divinity will ever suffice for them to take her blessing. We must remove the wicked ones from among ourselves, so be warned the road to salvation is a narrow one. And many have, through their own decisions, fallen off the road. For hatred is the only logical reaction to those who reject her, we must ensure that everyone knows this revelation. Massacre in the jungle. A military patrol sent in the jungle surrounding the edges of Balangawi of territory have been ambushed. Spraying. Thousands of guerrilla fighters poured out of the trees and brush, spraying bullets into the huddled crowds of troops, barely giving them a chance to retaliate. Hundreds of storm child soldiers have perished, and the carnage has been so great that the rivers are said to be running red with blood. The Balangawi rebels are becoming more and more bold, and nothing crushing blow to our power. Village resists a burning attempt. 
A small village near the southern border of Balangal has miraculously resisted an onset by one of her regiments, <clears throat> which was approaching to set the town alight for harboring rebel fugitives. The villagers drove off the troops with pitchforks, clubs, and spears, and pro after a protracted two-day battle, which ended in a breaking rank and retreating for their lives back in the jungle. It's been a humiliating defeat for our army, and showing villages across Balangal they were not invincible, inspiring widespread social unrest on the burn now. Fire, uh, fire some regiments. Require garrisons goes down. Fish parties. Hunting games. We'll make an example out of the tyrants, the heretics, and infidels that lead to the, the suspect of depravity. They'll be hunted like animals they are and make a fine spectacle out of this event. The people of Manila have had their minds polluted with the delusions of these scoffers of our goddess. When they see their former overlords hunted like wild boar, what will they think of the false gods and odds that they formerly uh, bowed towards? A pure army. Just like the termites of the jungle, those heretics have borrowed their way, burrowed their way into every facet of our society. If the military is corrupted with a rotten seeds of disbelief in a goddess, then the fruits of the tree will be tainted with their ideology and a false idol. Most read all signs of false religion with uh, religious fervor never seen before. By swift of words, the apostate brings his comrades to desolation, but the wisdom of the zealous are rescued, which will cast them into the storms of her fury. Can't do anything about that. Sucks. Um, more artillery? Astrophobia. In order, by, to, in order to control and more importantly convert the people of Balangal, we must use power resources and most useful fear. They must have respect for us and the goddess we obey. This requires a healthy fear. Just like a boy fears invoking the anger of his father, so too do the people need to fear and respect the decrees of the government. We're building a new system, a new nation, under the most gracious goddess, so we are required to ensure the survival of our nation, state, by any means necessary. We shall unlock the shackles of the false idols and prophets that hold the people of this region back from obtaining the love and protection of our goddess. Blood drenches the land and fire illuminate the sky. Why do this? What is the point? Glory, power. She cannot give you power. She will not. Power does not derive her, from her. Her power is found in good. Good is power. This is evil. Evil is not power. Evil is the illusion of power. Also, we're going to come over here and get uh, guns and explosives. So you start working on better guns and whatnot. Metal armor. Ooh. Do we not get any hardness in this? If it's metal, I guess not. Cost 50 every day. Okay. Astrophobia. The honey game. Across Balanga, thousands of soldiers roam the countryside and patrol the villages. Houses are searched mercilessly. Thousands are arrested and some are executed. A great hunt has begun across the territory, with soldiers fanning out in every direction, hunting for the former Balangawi officials. As the search continues, Balanga dies more and more. A great hunt to keep the men's spirit up. Fire some regiments, of course. Impress the prisoners. Our enemies will become the servants of our goddess with their education support of the clergy, which will make these heretics accept the everlasting glory of her. Putting the captured heretics into the guarded civilian communities will create the perfect opportunity to integrate the prisoners of war in our society, we'll receive new warriors, and they'll be welcomed into a community. Convoy defense regiments. Cool. And search uh, patrol party. And of course, like this, the pure army. But if you, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we continue with this campaign in the Hearts of Ash mod for Hearts of Iron 4. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.